In the name of Allah, Assalamu Alaikum, dear brothers and sisters, welcome to the program. Well, today we're going to listen to a recitation by Brother Hamid Shakir Najad, Surah Al Tahrim, verse 5. <laughs> Brother Hamid Shakir Najat is a very good Iranian reciter of the Holy Quran who was born in May 1983 in the city of Mashhad near the Holy Shrine of Imam Rida alayhi salam. You know, his father, Brother Mahmoud Shakir Najat and his brother, Brother Hamid Shakir Najat were also two very good reciters of the Quran. And in this Quranic family, they very much like to listen to the recitations of Shaykh Mustafa Ismail. Brother Hamid Shakir Najad very much liked the style of recitation of Shaykh Mustafa Ismail. And his brother and his father were also, they would also recite uh, using the style of Shaykh Mustafa Ismail. In an interview, Brother Hamid Shakir Najad had said that he had listened to more than a thousand tapes of Shaykh Mustafa Ismail and he had imitated the recitations of those tapes precisely and he knew why Shaykh Mustafa Ismail would for example recite such and such verse in such and such way. And another interesting characteristic about Brother Hamid Shaykh Najat is that when he recites the Holy Quran and you don't know that uh, Brother Hamid Shakir Najat is reciting the Quran, you wouldn't be able to tell that he's an Iranian reciter. You would think that he is an Egyptian reciter. And there's a reason for this. This is because since Hamid Shakir Najat was a very small child, he listened to the tapes of the recitation of Sheikh Mustafa Ismail. And, uh, you know, phoneticians say that there's a critical period uh, before the age of puberty. If someone learns a language, they will have good accent of that language. And Brother Shakir Najat, Brother Hamid Shakir Najat, he listened to the tapes of Quran recitation before the critical period, actually before puberty, during the critical period. And that is why his accent is very Arabic and he sounds like an Egyptian. This is the concept called Fasaha. His Fasaha is very good. Oh, 
Tahrim is one of the very beautiful surahs of the Holy Quran, which many reciters, especially Egyptian reciters, very much like to recite this surah, especially the fifth verse of this surah. But why is it? We have to look into the translation and commentary of the verses of this surah to find out why. Okay, in this surah, Allah is strongly defending His Prophet against two of His wives, okay? Because the Prophet had said that he swore an oath to make something which was lawful to him unlawful in order to please his wives. Allah says, Why do you, O Prophet, Ya Ayyuhan Nabi, why do you make something which Allah has made lawful to you, unlawful to yourself? Then Allah says that He has made lawful to you dissolution of your oaths. Okay? So Allah says, break your oath and uh, don't make that thing which was lawful to you, unlawful to you. Now about uh, what this unlawful, this lawful thing which the Prophet made unlawful to himself was, there is a difference of opinion among uh, commentators of the Holy Quran. Some say that Prophet Muhammad went to the house of Zainab bin Tijash, one of his wives, and there he ate some honey which she had prepared and uh, one of the wives, two of the wives, or one of the wives of the Prophet, they saw this and they were jealous of that wife, that wife of Prophet Muhammad. And uh, so they decided to tell Prophet Muhammad that his mouth smells like a very foul smelling, for example, herb or something like that, okay? And when Prophet Muhammad heard this, Prophet Muhammad says that he will never again eat honey. He made unlawful to himself honey. Of course, a group of, another group of commentators say that Prophet Muhammad was with his wife, actually his handmaiden, Maria Tul Qibtiya, or Maria the Copt. And uh, one of the wives of the Prophet saw this that he was with that uh, handmaiden of Prophet Muhammad and she was jealous of Mar Maria the Copt and as a result Prophet Muhammad made her unlawful to himself. Either way, Prophet Muhammad made something lawful unlawful on himself and Allah says that you have to break your promise and there was a secret that the Prophet asked his wives to keep. The Prophet said that whenever I swore this oath, don't tell anyone that I have done this. But that wife of the Prophet went and disclosed the Prophet's secret. And then the Prophet told that person how she had disclosed uh, his secret. And that wife of the Prophet said, how did you know that I disclosed my secret? The Prophet says, نَبَّأَنِي الْعَلِيمُ الْخَبِيرُ The all-knowing and all-aware 
told me that you disclosed my secret. And then in the fifth verse that we're going to listen to today, Allah is addressing the wives of the Prophet. He's saying, إِن If he, Prophet Muhammad, divorces you, he will place in their stead better wives, okay? He will substitute you with better wives who are Muslimat. They are submissive to Allah. Mu'minat. They are believers. Qanitat. They are obedient. Ta'ibat. They are penitent. Abidat. They are devout and worshipping women. Sa'ihat. They are given to fasting. They are fasting women who like to fast. Thayyibat, meaning non-virgins. Wa'abkara, and also virgins. <laughs> Okay, Brother Hamid Shakir Najat is not reciting in the riwayah of Hafs an Asim. Hafs an Asim is the most famous method of reciting the Quran. And most people in the world, they recite using this method of recitation. But Brother Hamid Shakir Najat is using another method of reciting the Quran, which is called Hamza. It's a qira'ah known as Hamza. Hamza has two riwayas, Khalad and Khalaf. Apparently, Brother Hamid Shaykh Najat is reciting in the riwayah of Khalaf and Hamza. And how do we know this? We know this by how he pronounces the word Asa. Instead of saying Asa, he says Asi, Asi, which is Imala. We have a ya with a small alif on top of it. And uh, this alif al mad is read with imala in the qira'ah of Hamza. Imala means that 75% of the vowel is a kasra and only 25% is fatha. So it's more inclined to a ya al mad than an alif al mad. Another way that we know that this is the riwayah of Khalaf and Hamza and not Hafs and Asim is whenever he applies idgham in the phrase ayyubdilahu he doesn't say ayyubdilahu he says ayyubdilahu without the ghunna on the ya mushaddad in the riwayah of Khalaf and Hamza and the qira'ah of Hamza Whenever a nun sakina merges into either waw or the letter ya, you should not apply ghunna. Okay, you do idgham bila ghunna. However, in hafs, you do have to apply the ghunna. Another way that we know that this is the riwayah of Khalaf and Hamza is how he does sect on the meds. Ta'ibat, Ta'ibatin, Abidatin, Sa'ihat. See the pause that he makes on, uh, after pronouncing the med, they are sect. These are called sect. Of course, this is only whenever you're continuing and you're doing wasl. If you want to stop on such words, you have to do tasheel in the qira of Hamza. For example, he says, uh, Brother Hamid Shaqin Najat says, Ta'ibat. He doesn't say Ta'ibat. He says Ta'ibat without the mad. This is when he's, when he's stopping on this word. Or for example, Sa'ihat. This again does not have nabra. We have tasheel of the Hamza and without lengthening without mad. Now, in terms of the maqamat that Brother Hamid Shaykh Najat is using, this is maqam nahawand, one of the very beautiful uh, maqams that are used by reciters of the Qur'an. And uh, most reciters have used this maqam 
And of course, some reciters rarely use this maqam. For example, Sheikh Abdul Basit rarely uses maqam Nahawand. Sheikh Sayyid Mutawalli Abdul Al has rarely used maqam Nahawand in his recitations. But all the other reciters, they have used this maqam, especially Mustafa Ismail. And the style of recitation of Brother Hamid Shakir Nijad is very similar to Sheikh Mustafa Ismail in this recitation that we're going to be listening to. In Quran recitation, we have three registers. The first one is the lower register called Qarar. Then we have the middle register, which is called Jawab, which is the uh, highest note of the first octave. Okay? And then we have Jawab al Jawab, which is the highest register or the highest note of the second octave. Okay? Qarar Jawab, Jawab al Jawab. Brother Hamid Shakir Najad uses all three registers in his recitation. And those who have all three registers uh, in their voice are said to have complete voices, just like Brother Hamid Shakir Najad. And now uh, let's go ahead and listen to Surah Al Tahrim, verse 5, recited by Brother Hamid Shakir Najad. وصفات 